Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Bean here, and today I'm coming at you with the first wrap-up, with my first wrap-up, of 2022. This is my January wrap-up, and I'm quite proud of how I started out this year, honestly. It went quite well for me, I'm gonna say. Um, I managed to read 12 books in the month of January, which, starting off strong, hopefully it stays that way, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> and I actually liked the majority of them too, which is also kind of shocking for me. But um, I don't have the usual stats that I have. I have kind of fewer stats, um, more concerned with the books themselves. But yeah, so I'm just gonna hop right into it, basically. Um, as far as the books themselves go, I read four books, I read four print books, like printed books, I read three ebooks, and I listened to five audiobooks. Um, I ended up DNFing two books, unfortunately, and they happened to be in a row, which was just unfortunate in so many ways, shapes, and forms. Three of these books were rereads, and as far as pages go, I read approximately 2,300 pages, just right around there. Um, and then I listened to 45 hours and about 36 minutes of audiobooks this month. So that's, that's pretty good. That, I'd say that that is pretty good as far as all things are concerned. Um, three. three of them are ARCs, so three of them are not out yet, or I think one of them is out now, but it wasn't out when I read it, if that makes sense. And three of them were also library books, so that's also quite exciting. But yes, yeah, so we're gonna hop right into it, because I don't know how else you want me to do the stats. I'm just gonna do the ratings as I do the book itself, or as I tell you about the book itself. So the first book that I read, I actually listened to, but I also have a physical copy of. So that book was And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I love this book. I reread it every single year. Kind of gets me into the mood of whatever. It, it's one, it is probably my favorite murder mystery book ever. Honestly, it's, it's such a well done book. Um, this follows 12 people. No, this follows 10 people who are invited slash sent to an island. Um, where they are accused of having committed an heinous crime of murder at some point in their life. And this whole experience on the island um, is basically a result in that, and they are all going to pay for it, is basically what their unknown host is saying. And it is so well done. This is an inspiration, in, uh, for me at least, for any murder mystery, for anything you want for that. Um, and I cannot stop recommending this book. It is so well done. It is so good. And it's, it reads really well and really easy too. I have found that every single time I read it, I pick up something new. I ended up giving this a five out of five. Next book I read was a library book, so I did have to return it. And that is The Tiger's Nest, which is the fifth book in the Explorer Academy series, I believe it was, by Trudy Truitt. I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5. Uh, it is a middle grade novel. It's about 216 pages. Um, I did read it in just about like two or three days. This follows Cruz Coronado, who has been accepted to an adventure school, basically training the new versions of Indiana Jones um, and Laura Croft, however, without the actual stealing and guns, um, with the most up-to-date uh, with the most up-to-date technology, even stuff that doesn't actually exist in our world yet, but these kids are learning how to use it. And it's really cool. You learn a lot about the ecosystem. You learn a lot about the world in general and different cultures. And I think it was really well done. This one wasn't my favorite of all of the books, um, but it really did kind of up the drama if you will. The next book that I read was Crooked House by Agatha Christie. Um, this one I uh, have an, I borrowed an audiobook from, from Scribd. 
and I did give it a five out of five. It was a, it was a book that I don't know much about, honestly. I haven't really, I haven't actually, I hadn't read it before. This was a brand new book for me to read, and it was very interesting, and I did not see the ending coming at all, so that was a very Agatha Christie move, but I was... I was shocked by the ending, but I also wasn't because, again, it was a very Agatha Christie move and it was a very much a her kind of style of ending where it's just like, oh, but but that makes so much sense. Why didn't I think of that? And it's it was very, very well done. I loved the development of the characters throughout the story um, and the traditional Agatha Christie misleads that you get throughout the entire book. I think it was amazingly well done and again this got five out of five from me the next two books i'm just gonna go over really quickly i reread the first two books in the harry potter series i reread harry potter and the philosopher's stone which i give it five out of five too because i still love this story i think it's well done and it's so nostalgic for me that i can't ignore that anymore and then I read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which got 4.5. This has never been my favorite book, but going back and rereading it as an adult, I also have come across a bunch of other things that I do appreciate um, in that book. And after a lot of the um, Tumblr slash Pinterest slash iFunny posts, I it's kind of gotten me to think about other things as well. So I think this is a good, a good time for me to reread these. Um, and I, I am enjoying my reread, so I'm a, a little over halfway through The Prisoner of Azkaban, so I will be finishing that this month and then moving on. The next book I read was one of the arcs that I have, and that was Under Lock and Skeleton Key, the first book in the Secret Staircase Mystery series by Gigi Pandian. Pandian. Pandian, I'm sorry. Um, I gave this a 3 out of 5. I thought this was well done. Um, it made sense. But for me, there were so many elements that she tried to introduce that just it, it wasn't even that it became overwhelming. It became very busy and keeping track of everything became a little bit of a challenge. But it was more I wanted to focus on the mystery and I kept getting distracted by other things. Um, I think this was a well done book and I will definitely read something else by her. I haven't decided if I'm going to continue with this series or not. Um, I love the concept. Basically it follows a, um, a magician who has had a near death experience on the stage and so she has moved away from the stage life and she has now moved to moved back home where her family runs a business that creates secret doors and secret passageways in people's homes. Um, and while she's there, though, she ends up finding her old assistant in the wall of one of the houses that her dad is working on. And it becomes a big mystery as to who killed her and why is she there. And it's a big thing. It was really intense on, at points. Um, and I do highly recommend it. It was very well done. I think it needs a little fine tuning as far as what is in the book itself. So it was very unique. There were there was very unique characters, which I did appreciate. Um, it wasn't cookie cutter in any way, shape or form. And I did love that. Um, but there was just a lot going on, I think. Moving on, the next book that I read was Beast Boy, the second book in the new Teen, the Teen Titans graphic novel series. Uh, this is by Cami Garcia with illustrations by Gabriel Piccolo. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5. I really enjoyed it. I um, actually ended up borrowing this from my library because we have them. So I read this one. I really liked it. I thought it was cute. It was a good origin story for Beast Boy, I think. Um, like, it's, I don't think it's, a, it's not canon to the comics, but it was very well done and I really appreciated it appreciated it um and again i highly recommend this series it is adorable it is sweet and i have read beast boy loves raven and it is it's so cute and there's more characters coming in now and i'm very excited to continue with this series the next book that i read was ember of night by molly e lee this is the first book in the ember of light i believe it's just a duology 
I DNF'd this book. I got approximately 50 pages into it and went, I don't care. And I, unfortunately for me, that's a uh, point where I'm, I'm done with the book at that point. If I don't care about, about the characters by 25, 50 pages in, then it's, I'm not going to enjoy this book. And so I have heard that a lot of people do enjoy this book. I couldn't get into it. Um, I kind of saw it as predictable and I don't, I don't mind the unlikable main characters, but I couldn't even sympathize with her situation. I just found her obnoxious. So unfortunately, this book was just not for me. The next book that I read was City of the Beast by Isabel Allende. This is the first book in the Memories of the Eagle and the Jaguar series. I DNF'd this book as well, unfortunately. Um, the writing in this book felt so juvenile and so just, it felt as though it was kind of more written by a child. And I know this book was translated. It's not because of that. That is not the reason that I did not like this book. I have nothing against translated works. And I've heard wonderful things about Isabel Allende's writing. She writes a lot of adult books. This was her first YA series, I believe. And it's got an amazing, awesome cover. I love it. Um... But unfortunately for me, the characters just felt very 2D. It felt like they weren't fleshed out. I didn't get to know them and things just happened. And it's like, why are these things happening? But things are just happening. Um, I had really high hopes for this book, unfortunately, too. So I'm very disappointed that I didn't like it. But I will be trying some of her other books because I actually read a couple other reviews of this book and a lot of people are commenting that her adult books are way better. Um... So I'm going to give that a shot instead and see if I like those better. Uh, apparently, her writing just didn't translate well into YA. What it felt like was she wrote an adult book and then she just dumbed it down for kids, which isn't how you write a YA book. At least that's not how, for me, it works. So I will not be keeping this book. I will be unhauling it, unfortunately. But I do very much want to try some of her other works, so I will be eventually doing that. The next book I read was one that I was kind of dreading a little bit, and that was from this book, and that was 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I really enjoyed it! Um, I gave it a 4 out of 5. I did not expect what happened to happen. This is not what I had heard. Um, they, but it's so interesting, and I forget... I read Jules Verne before, but Jules Verne is a Jules Verne is a very scientifically based writer. So a lot of the science he has in here is is real. Um and then he just kind of kind of adds to it what he needs in order to make his story work. I love that so much and I would love to continue reading his stories. I have two more in here, which is 5 Weeks in a Balloon and Around the World in 80 Days. So I do plan on reading those maybe this year, hopefully, maybe I'll just read one a year. I don't know. But it's very scientifically dense as well. So consider this a warning if you do plan on reading this book. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is a long book. It is over 400 pages and the audiobook was over 16 hours long. So it did take me a little while to get through, but again, it was so well done. Highly recommend. Almost there, I got two left. The last two books that I read were both ARCs that I got off of NetGalley, and I have reviewed one, and the other one will be going up later on in the year because it doesn't come out till June. So the first one I read was Must Love Books by Shauna Robinson, which I ended up giving a 3.5 out of 5. I thought it was a well done book. Um, it was an interesting book. It was very easy to connect with Nora and her drive to do well for herself and her own. And I appreciated the fact that, yes, she made mistakes. She made some big mistakes in this book, but I never like wanted to smack her upside the head. Each time I was like, I understand. I get it. Where I understand where she's coming from with making these mistakes. So basically, this book follows Nora, who works at a publishing firm, or at an editing firm, publishing, publishing firm, I believe it was, and um, she's living paycheck to paycheck, and she ends up getting offered a deal that she just can't turn down as far as finances go, and things kind of start spiraling, uh, She, but she ends up meeting an author and becoming very close with this author, 
and she has to decide where she wants to sign this author with. Um, I do like the fact that this book did not wrap up all nice and pretty in a bow either. Um, It was a good book, but unfortunately for me, it wasn't anything super special, which is why it didn't get a higher rating, which makes me so sad because I lo I really did enjoy this book, but it just wasn't, it didn't stand out to me, unfortunately. Um, but I highly recommend this book to anybody who loves books or who loves to read about people who love books. So I do think that there were a lot of great a lot of great points to this story and a lot of things that did make me think and at points it did make me uncomfortable um but I think overall it was well done but yeah it was it was good it was a 3.5 out of 5 for me so not bad and the last book I want to talk about today was actually my favorite book of the month, and it was the last one that I read, and that is Maggie Moves On by Lucy Score. This book does not come out until June 21st of 2022, which makes me very, very sad, but I basically read it in the equivalent of one, of one day, or I read this in one day. I would have read it in one sitting had I been able to, but I was working that day, so it just... I was not able to technically and I ended up staying up until actually three o'clock in the morning to finish this book. <laughs> but this book follows Maggie who is a YouTube star who does DIY, um, fix up, fixes up old homes. And so she ends up in a small town in Idaho? I think Idaho something like that. And she um, meets this guy, Silas, who happens to be her head landscaper. He is brilliant at his job, but he is distracting as all heck. And he's just flirting with her nonstop. And it just, it's basically a very cute love story that also deals with um, communication along with the fact that she has a celebrity life and he does not get that he doesn't do social media much at all um and it kind of addresses when people come from small towns and going back getting back to your roots and getting over um past hurts and your and issue things that have happened in the past so this is a very good book i squealed there are steamy sex scenes i call them steamy sex scenes because i don't read many sex scenes but there were sex scenes in this book so you have been warned i guess but I gave this a five out of five. I absolutely loved this book. Um, I do plan on reading reading it again, and I have pre-ordered the actual physical copy of this book because I need it, um, or I will be ordering it. I haven't yet, but I do plan on ordering the physical copy of this book because I need it. And yeah, so yes. All right. Well, that's what I got for you guys here today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, now is the perfect time to give it a thumbs up and to hit that subscribe button. We post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and the occasional Sunday. And if you want to be reminded when we post these videos, please hit the little bell icon down below. And until next time, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep reading. Bye!